Hodgson from Rusty Blue 85 and I'm back with another card making video here on my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be making a birthday card using the Honey Bee Stamps Winter Anemone Stamp Set. And this is a, a look at the card that I'm going to be making today and uh, just a little um, pre-warning that it's going to involve some Arteza Real Brush Markers. Uh, so this is the stamp set I'm going to be using today by Honey Bee Stamps. It's called the Winter Anemone. Um, it does have holly leaves and holly berries, but I think that you can use it all year round. Um, I'm going to be stamping and colouring on Canson Bristol Smooth paper. And I have the 96 set of the Arteza Real Brush Markers, and I've picked out the markers that I'm going to be using from my swatch chart that I've got here. Um, and I will be listing them whenever I'm using them. So... Um, just because I've never used this stamp set before, I'm going to be using my Tim Holtz stamping platform just to get some repeat stamping so that I can get a really nice black outline from the stamped images. I'm going to be using almost all of the images with the anemone flowers on, uh, just get a, a really good bouquet going, um, except the ones that have the uh, holly leaves on because it's still August and I am not ready for Christmas. No, no. Um, so I'm just picking the stamps up with the door of the stamping platform and I'm going to be using Versamark ink in onyx black uh, purely because I'm going to be using uh, watercolour. It's a really good uh, stamp ink to try again, ink to use um, when you're going to be watercolouring later instead of the memento that I normally use whenever I'm using my alcohol pens. Um, and as you can see, that larger stamp is uh, quite a large image, so it's quite difficult to get a, a good impression. Um, and as you'll see later, I end up restamping it so many times that the lines become a bit thick. So uh, what I will be doing is restamping the larger flower cluster again on the other half of this paper, just so that I have a, a nicer image. Um, but I do find that if you just roll your sleeve down over your uh, over your wrist and you use that to press down into the into the stamp, then it does improve the image if it's a, a larger stamp. So just rolling my t-shirt down to press that in really well. And here you can see that I've restamped the largest image and one of these small um, anemones as well. I'm using the Wow Extra Fine uh, Clear Gloss uh, and just because VersaFine does stay and Versa Mark stay um, sticky for longer, I can uh, heat emboss this with clear and that will just help with the uh, water colouring later because it traps the colour within the shape. Uh, it means that I'm less likely to go out of the lines. I still go out of the lines. <laughs> I'm not a particularly good colourist. Um, there are other people on YouTube who are amazing. Um, so you know, kind of don't don't necessarily come to my channel if you want uh, amazing water colouring or Copic colouring. There are much better people out there, but uh, I'm quite proud of the uh, the end result that I managed to achieve with this card. So uh, I'm just heat setting the clear embossing powder with my heat tool. Um, it's the Jewel Speed Wow Embossing Powders um, own brand uh, heat tool. Um, and now that everything's heat set, I'm going to start colouring with my Arteza Real Brush Markers. I'm using a three colour blend uh, in my anemones today. Uh, in the Arteza range, I'm using the Thistle Purple as my base, the Wisteria Purple as my second uh, darkest, and my Violet as my, my darkest colour in the petals. Uh, purple is my mum's favourite colour that anemones come in, so I spent ages looking on Google Images to try and find a suitable kind of anemone colour that I could snatch the, the colour um, colour away from. Um, and these were the closest that I could find uh, to the ones that I was looking for. So um, I'll be putting on some music so that you can just watch the uh, colouring. It's sped up to uh, two or three times the actual speed that I colour at. I colour really, really slowly. Um, and I don't know if you can tell, but I've just got some water on my uh, crafting mat that I'm picking up with my Arteza water brush uh, marker. There's no water inside the barrel because I tend to find that um, that comes out a bit too fast. So I do like putting water on my mat to uh, blend out the colors using the water brush. 
Um, so for the centres, I'm going to be using smoke grey, ash black and noir. And for the leaves, I've got light green, green and shamrock green. Uh, so as I said, uh, I'm going to put on some music and you can watch the colouring in very sped up time. Um, and I hope you enjoy.
after colouring in all of my anemones I made sure that they were dry and then I fussy cut them out because I don't have the dyes but I didn't really want the white border either. Um, so I didn't film that because I don't think you need to see me painstakingly cutting them out individually. Um, they're quite easy to cut out but um, still you don't want to see that. So I'm just going around the edge with a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Marker in the broad form because um, it's got a brush tip so it makes it slightly easier to go around the edges and I always um, colour from the back just in case I slip and then I, I get pen on the back and not on something that I've spent ages colouring. Um, so now I'm working on the background um, and this is still some Canson Bristol Smooth and Inara's popped in to say hi, uh, check out what I'm doing. Um, and for the background I'm just scribbling on the Arteza Real Brush Markers in teal and electric blue uh, and again using my Arteza uh, brush pen and some water on my craft mat uh, just to blend it all together and you'll see from this clip that I just repeatedly go over it with the uh, two different brush markers and some water just to blend it all in. <laughs> So once I was happy with how my uh, painted background was looking I set it aside to dry and the other bit of my background that I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using this Ringling background dye from Poppy Stamps. Um, it's a very very intricate dye so it's quite difficult to die cut when you're using um, a hand crank machine. Um, I would probably recommend if you do have the dye to use a, an electric machine because um, they have more pressure. So those were my attempts on Bristol Smooth and as you can see the, the dye was just sliding all over the place so it was doing multiple cuts and, and they just looked dreadful. So in the end I ended up using my Elizabeth Craft Smooth cardstock um, and I also backed it with um, their double-sided adhesive sheet and it cut like a dream. It was beautiful. I think because of the texture it just grabbed onto the dye that little bit better so it stayed in place as it was cutting. So now I'm just arranging my flowers how I'd like them. Uh, again, I'm trying to use all of the flowers just so that it's a really busy um, foreground. So just moving the, the flowers around. Um, and I will be attaching them with uh, some with liquid glue and some with foam tape. Um, again, I haven't filmed that section because I didn't think you guys wanted to see me, you know, kind of struggling with my massive piece of foam tape. So I want to create my own uh, custom sized card base, uh, so I'm cutting uh, some Elizabeth Craft smooth cardstock to 24 centimetres by 15 centimetres um, and then I'm going to be scoring it at 12 centimetres and this will give me uh, a nice border around the ringling background uh, die cut that I've made. Um, and then I don't have to cut off any of the, the petals or the leaves that I've got from the anemones. Um, so I'm just using my Crafter's Companion scoring, uh, I don't even know what it's called anymore, like a scoring, buddy. <laughs> so yeah, I'm using the, um, the bone folder that comes with it. I'm not particularly good at, uh, folding cards exactly flat. So you'll see that I have multiple goes at it just to make absolutely sure that it's definitely in place and I knock the camera loads of times as well, sorry about that. Um, so now that I have my custom card base I'm going to be attaching my background. Uh, you can see that the watercolour panel is really really warped. I have put that through my die cutting machine in an attempt to flatten it out but it's still not happy about it. Thankfully I've got uh, the Elizabeth Craft double sided uh, adhesive on the back of my ringling background so because that's a very intimate, uh, intimate? intricate die um, it means that it will stick well to that 
piece of uh, watercolored paper and now I'm just going to be attaching it to the card base using lots and lots and lots of wet glue to get all of the bits adhered down nicely to that card base. <laughs> I'm going to be adding my sentiment to the front of the card. Unfortunately, uh, I didn't realise that I hadn't pressed play. I'd just turned my um, my camera on, but I hadn't started recording. So I didn't manage to record um, me uh, stamping and pouring the embossing powder onto this black cardstock. So I wanted to use uh, white embossing powder on black uh, just because I've already got the black outlines on the anemones um, and also the sort of black flower centers um in the flowers as well so i felt that black and white was was a really good way to go um i'm just using my microfiber cloth to get rid of the anti-static uh, powder that i put on there so that i don't get any um embossing powder where i don't want it so the sentiment is from a sentiment set by my favorite things and there's also uh slanted uh, sentiment strip that you can get from my favorite things as well so I've used the die um, and that means that it fits perfectly the happy birthday sentiment um, I'm just looking here to find out where I want to put my sentiment um, and I had to cut it a little bit crooked so I'm just uh, evening up the end uh, and again the sentiment is just hanging off the um, the ringling background um, and that's uh, to kind of tie in with all of the leaves and petals that are hanging outside as well. I'm just using my T-square ruler to get the sentiment straight and that is the card finished. Um, so if you like this card, uh, please give this video a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, give me any feedback that you'd like to give me in the comments section. I always like to get feedback. Um, if you're not already a subscriber, I'd love you to be, be a subscriber and thank you so much for staying with me. See you again soon. Bye. Thank you.